Well, hello, and welcome to I Love Gate today. And we are with someone that many of you who spend time online may know already, but for those that don't, it's Brian Sims. How are you, Brian? Hi, Matt. I'm so good. I'm, I'm very glad to be here. Uh, I couldn't wait to connect with you here. I mean, the last time I saw you, we were uh, at Allentown Pride together. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's amazing. In fact, that really goes to say something. I mean, you're in the you're in the world of politics and so forth, but I will say on my on a personal note, you really kind of go above and beyond when it comes to just being out in front of people. And uh, I really appreciated that when I saw you out there. That's very, very kind of you. You know, some of it's a little self-serving. I actually love Pride events and I, I tend to love smaller pride events you know the, the major cities and i've lived in one for for most of my adult life have really fantastic prides but if you want to know what pride is about go to an allentown go to a bethlehem go to scranton pennsylvania and they're some of my favorites yeah i hear you but you and i are going to be together uh, uh jumping right into the the core of this which is we're going to be together in dallas in september which is uh for an event that's coming together for uh, unleashed lgbt expo and so uh, number one i look forward to seeing you down there I'm, uh, you know, this will be. Uh, this is not my first Unleashed. This is something that I've uh, I've done in the past, which is part of the reason I was so grateful to get asked to participate again this year, because I, I it's not only a really fantastic collection of people doing good work, um, it's it's one of those reminders for me annually about you know how much work we have to do. Yeah, yeah. No, but uh, that kind of ties into. I mean, you've got you've got an incredible history together there. But right now you're. Uh, you're the managing director, of government affairs, public policy at Out Leadership, and I, I love Out Leadership and the the what they've put together over the years. I've I've stayed very connected to online and through LinkedIn for all this time, and so you're part of a really great team there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know my 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 term in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, my ten years ended at the end of November last year. Yeah. So I'm just about you know five six months out. And um, I, I had been interviewing with a couple of different organizations, but when the opportunity to work at Out Leadership popped up, it was something that I, I sort of jumped at. Yeah. Um, Out, Out Leadership has, for the last 13 years, been sort of the premier platform for businesses to engage in LGBTQ equality work. Mm -hmm. um, something that's deeply meaningful for me as both a, a former legislator and as a civil rights activist and advocate is sort of the, the sort of bang for the buck who who can help us move um you know move, move the ball forward on equality and everyone has understood that big businesses have have a role to play in that and sometimes we don't like the role that they play and sometimes we want them to play more of a role and uh, my job without leadership is to work with those businesses that already have uh, espouse support for LGBTQIA plus people and to help them better understand how to navigate the the sort of current landmines that are out there with respect to, to social justice work and fighting back against, for example, all these anti-trans bills or fighting back against this new kill the gays bill in Uganda. Yeah, yeah. In fact, out leadership, I think also what sets them apart is that they've always focused very much on the C-suite in terms of their outreach and so forth, which a lot of organizations always want to, but don't often reach at that level. And so I think that that together, and then with you, it seems like you're going to be able to kind of expand that from there into a lot of the some of the government folks that uh, you've come in contact with over the years. Well, you know, th this the the organization was was founded by Todd Sears, our CEO and founder, uh, 13 years ago. And in in many ways, this organization has been founded on the relationships that Todd Sears built during his time in finance, his time in New York, and his time doing equality work. And having that sort of top down approach to equality to to work with the the bottom up approaches for equality that all of us engage in. Um, is part of the reason that I think that Out Leadership has been so successful in in working with Fortune 100 and Fortune 500 companies to to get them to support equality. Yeah, but you've been dealing with that. That's what I realized. I didn't I didn't actually know until recently that I mean you're president of Equality Pennsylvania and you've been in, in, very involved with the Gay and Lesbian Victory Fund. I mean that's that's a lot prior to when you were when you dove into the world of politics. It, yeah, it is. You know, I, I moved to Philadelphia right after law school, um, and I was a disability attorney, actually, when I first started in, in practice. And what I didn't know is that I was moving to a, a city that had good LGBTQ civil rights, which got much better, in a state that has none, virtually none. You know, Pennsylvania is the, the last great gerrymandered legislature in America, and it is run by Republicans at the legislative level, even though Democrats dominate at the electoral level. 
And, um, you know, one of the, one of the places that, that that required a lot of fight and a lot of pushback was, was non-discrimination laws and housing, employment in public accommodations, insurance and education. And so I, I sort of joined that effort right out of, right out of law school and pretty quickly, um, had the opportunity to, to help run Equality Pennsylvania for, for a number of years, but there was this data point map that, that stuck with me, and that is that no state that had ever passed any type of comprehensive LGBTQ legislation at the time did it without having out legislators. And, and we were the largest state in the country that had never done that. And so I, I after a lot of consultation with friends and family, stepped back from uh, a number of boards and nonprofits that I was working with, and I left my job at the Bar Association and, uh, and decided to run for office. Wow. Wow. Well, I will say that being a now a fellow Pennsylvanian and, and I see a difference because I'm from LA, California, and you know, you, you, you vote, but you, your vote doesn't always feel like it means as much because the whole state always goes a certain way. Moving to New York and living in Manhattan, same thing. But when I moved to Pennsylvania, I felt like my vote really meant something and counted for the first time. Well, you know, it, it, it does. It sounds trite to say, but in a place where, where the sort of false politics of a conservative leadership that should not exist yeah. has that the ability to get messages far and wide being a counter to those messages is a, a politically valuable politically critical thing to be now part of the reason that i'm i love pennsylvania so much is despite being a a very blue collar working class state it is a state that largely supports lgbtq equality from corner to corner from from Scranton to Erie and Philadelphia to Pittsburgh, you will find supporters of LGBTQ equality among all walks of life. And unfortunately, the most conservative place in all of Pennsylvania is the capital when we're in session. But it is not indicative of how how blue collar working class Americans feel about equality. Yeah. Well, this is gonna this is probably gonna resonate quite well now that uh, we'll be in Texas together, and that's also quite. Uh, even above and beyond anything in Pennsylvania, quite the battleground. So uh, I think I think a lot of what you have, well, what you will have to say, will probably resonate well. You know, I was just in Texas in December. I was in Houston to to meet with a number of advocates and activists and the largest businesses in the region to really talk about what was happening with legislation in Texas: anti-trans legislation, anti-reproductive rights legislation, anti-health care legislation, and how it impacts you know, the largest businesses in, in Texas, yeah. the, the Texas Republican party continually espouses the belief that what they're doing is somehow good for business. And it is not equality is good for business. And we need business to say that to, to the, the Texas legislature and Texas legislative leaders and, and businesses are stepping up and doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is going to be exciting. And, uh, mostly I'm looking forward to being, uh, being down there with you and, uh, and finally, you know, reconnecting in the real world again, which uh, which it's nice to see that we're all doing this much more now than we were last year. Yeah, we can we'll grab a cup of coffee together, and I'll sh I'll show you pictures of my dog on my phone. <laughs> I love that. But no, thanks so much for being here and you know, kind of sharing a bit of your story with our audience. And uh, like I said, I very much look forward to uh, connecting and see where all this goes. Well, I'm I am grateful for this program. I'm grateful for programming like yours because you know, as an elected official, as someone who's trying to move the needle on equality, it, it is impossible not to recognize that pop culture has changed uh, the sort of framework for equality advocacy far more than any elected official in the country. Maybe with the exception of Barack Obama. And so, while uh, it's important for for you and for I to make sure that people know what we're all up to. One of the things that I know is that programs like this have a very real impact on not only people's sense of their community, but their sense of advocacy as well. So thank you. Oh, great feedback. So thank you. And so we'll make sure um, also I'm going to link to all your social media and, and so forth from uh, when we post this and uh, look forward to seeing you. Fantastic. Thanks again. Thank you.